Welcome to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh and in this video we'll go through how to match grade your HDRI to your footage and just double check that the colours are matching. So I've opened Photoshop but you can use pretty much any other image editing software. I'm just using Photoshop because it's probably what most people have. So if I just go File, Open and you have the files from the previous ones that we've done. So we've got the tripod no sun and we've just got the stitch no tripod. So you can pick and choose which one you want to bring in. I'm going to bring in the, uh, the stitched tripod no sun and select open. It doesn't matter so much because you can pick any one and follow through, depending on which one you want to use. So I'm going to right click and duplicate my background layer straight away. Select OK. And I'm going to hide it. So now we've got our HDR in with no sun. I'm also going to bring in the plate reference. So I'll go file, open. I go to my HDR file and you should have a plate ref. It should be chair BG01. I'll select open and select OK. So I'm just going to select all, edit, copy. Then I'll go over to my HDRI stitched, select edit, and I'll paste. So now we have our plate ref on our HDRI. And we can just select it and we can move around and we can see that where we have filmed is here on this chair. So I'm just going to control T to scale this down to a relatively a close similar size. And I'm going to alt middle mouse click to zoom in. And I just press enter and now that's scaled down to size. So we can see straight away we've got some differences here. We've got quite a lot of difference. So in our HDRI our exposure is quite a lot higher. And possibly we've got a little bit more red in here. But don't forget this is also a linear color space. And our HDRI is at a linear color space as well. Because I don't think PT GUI deals with color. So I think that's how it outputs it. I might be wrong. But I've always tried HDRIs as if they're in a linear color space. So I'm just going to drag this down over the top. And find a nice point where I can sort of match up the colors. So I'm going to go to my background copy. I'm going to go to image adjustments and I'm just going to first of all change my exposure. I'm going to raise my exposure to, you can see it started getting too much because you're not going to get exactly the same yet, but we can pick parts where we sort of, you've just got to find the right sort of level for it because we're still not at the same color. We can just change our exposure at the moment. We can sort of see even though the colors are different, we can sort of see our exposure is it's pretty similar actually. So we'll click OK. And we zoom out. And we can turn it off. And we can see we've changed the exposure for the shot quite a lot. So now we kind of want to match these colors as close as we can get. So the way I do this, there are plenty of ways that you can do this, but this seems to work quite well for me. And it's, it's a lot easier, I find. If you don't have a Macbeth chart or anything and you're just doing it by eye, the best way to do it is just by getting your two images you want to match and putting them on top. Then we'll go to our channel editors. Now, first of all, I want to look at my red channel. So if I just select my red channel, if I deselect all these and select my red, so you should only have your red selected. So I want to it will go back to it if you select it so I'm going to do that again so I select my red channel and you can see it's gone a grayscale because we're only viewing the red and we can see we've got some differences between our plate our plate is a little bit darker so what we can do we can go to our image adjustments and select our channel mixer and this is all we're going to use so our output channel is red and we're just going to use the red channel so we can move it left and right and see if we move it right it's going to get really bright that's because we're adding so much red it's going to just be like mars so we just want to play this slider until we sort of get a very similar tone it's not exact but it's almost disappeared on that edge it's going to be a little bit blurry but so i'm going to click ok once you've got it quite close just select ok and now you've edited the red channel on that 
So we're going to go through and do the green next. So select the green one and deselect the red. And you can see it's actually not that far off. So we'll go back to our image, adjustments, channel mixer. We'll change our output mod, uh, channel to green. And what I do, I'll just slide it all the way out so it's out of its set. Then I'll just gradually slide it up until I can see it sort of matching. And it's at 100%, which is what it was. And I think just leaving the green channel at 100% is probably spot on. So I'm just going to actually leave that and leave it at 100%. Then I go to my blue channel. And you see we've got some slight differences here. So I'll go image, adjustments, channel mixer. Then I'll change my output channel to blue. Then I'll just pull it all the way off. Then I'll slowly, gradually slide it and look at my image. And I just want to keep doing it until that sort of edge almost disappears or as close as. So that looks pretty close. The only difference is we've got a bit of blur. So if we select OK now, we can zoom out. And let's just select RGB. So now if we move our image around, we can actually see we've got a really, we've got it really close, like more than I actually expected. If we look at our slats, they're pretty much in the same place. And if we zoom out, you would almost think that maybe that might be a, uh, a clipping from this. We've got very similar grading here. There are some slightly dark places, but that's probably to be expected. So we're only worrying about the colors. So if we look at our shadows, they're looking really close. So we're pretty much done now. We've used our plate reference to sort of grade this in Photoshop. Like I said, you can use any imaging editing software as long as you have a channel mixer and you can isolate each RGB values. And yeah, we're pretty much done with this HDRI now. Um, our next step would just to bring it into 3D and um, test it out, put in our CG light. So yeah, um, so if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.